welcome. Te hei mauri ora, corporate to Bermistar Ho. Tene taku mihi mahanga, Malcolm. Kia koto i tene ata. Noreira tene koto kato. So thank you everybody for coming today, in particular to Mahanga and Malcolm for their warm welcome. Um, it is really great to see so much interest in this work, so I'm pleased to have you here. Um, Superu's report on what works for children exposed to family violence um, was published in June, and so since then we've also published a short video which summarises the main points for policymakers. And today I'll just go into a bit more detail about the topic and those findings. Um, I'll start with some brief background to the topic. Um, then I will summarise the findings from the international literature as well as from our survey of current services in Aotearoa. And I'll finish up by bringing those two points together um, to discuss the implications for policy and practice in this field. So, we know that family violence takes many forms. It's a slightly different slide than what I expected, and that's right. Um, <laughs> so although, although a lot of the research focuses on physical violence between intimate partners, it also includes sexual, emotional and psychological abuse both of and by children, parents, elders, siblings and other extended family and whānau members. Children can be exposed to family violence not just by seeing it but also by hearing it, being directly involved or also experiencing the aftermath of it. And we know that in New Zealand at least 70% of family violence offences occur while there are children in the household. And regardless of how they're exposed, the effects on children of exposure to family violence are just as harmful as if they'd been the direct or primary victim of physical abuse. Children themselves tell us that witnessing an adult being the victim of violence at, at home is actually more distressing and has a bigger impact than being hit themselves. And through exposure to violence, children learn responses such as aggression, they lose confidence in the ability of either parent to care for and protect them, and they cannot feel physically or psychologically safe. They're more likely than other children to be depressed or anxious, to attempt suicide, to be traumatised and be victims or perpetrators of future violence. And those effects are even greater the younger a child is. They might also manifest differently depending on a child's age and developmental stage, their gender and the presence of other stresses such as poverty. Exposure to family violence is also more prevalent among Pacific, Māori and Asian families and it's harder to overcome for families such as migrants and refugees because they might not have as much support or options to improve their situation. Um, however, we do know that not all children exposed to family violence go on to experience these negative effects and that they can be mitigated through protective factors such as a good relationship with a non-abusive parent or other caregiver positive sibling and peer relationships, and effective parenting. So when trying to help children have experienced negative effects from exposure to family violence, the services generally fall into one of these four, at least one of these four categories, and I'll come back to these throughout. So the first is psychotherapy, which is grounded in a stable relationship between the child and a therapist, and it aims to modify thoughts and behaviours by applying evidence-based psychological principles. Psychoeducation involves helping children learn about family violence and their response to it. Parenting skills training strengthens parents' ability to care for and support their children. And advocacy helps put children and families in touch with appropriate services and facilitate the referral processes. So turning now to the international evidence for those four types of interventions. Um, it generally shows that psychotherapy and parenting skills training have the strongest evidence, they're the most beneficial, and so according to Superu's evidence rating scale, which you will see down there, um, the recommendation is that we extend these types of services in New Zealand. In contrast, the evidence about psychoeducation and advocacy interventions is weaker and it already shows mixed effectiveness. So we'd be advised not to extend those beyond what's already offered. Um, other things that we know from the international evidence 
is that interventions are most effective when they're delivered to both children and their non-abusive parent rather than either group alone, and that's regardless of which of those four types of interventions is being offered. They also have the greatest effects when they're tailored to individual children's needs and delivered by quali highly qualified staff who understand the influence of trauma on how children function, and when they're delivered early, so ideally before age seven. Um, I want to shift now to looking at what services we're currently offering in New Zealand. And so in order to understand this, we surveyed 146 potential providers which were identified through government funding records and our own research. 57 of those providers completed the survey and of which 37 of those actually delivered a programme for children exposed to family violence. So this is a pretty good response rate comparatively but the usual caveats that you'd expect for this kind of research still apply. So first of all, we asked the service providers about the goals of their programs, and then we used those responses to categorise the programs into those four intervention types. Most of them had goals related to psychoeducation, such as identifying, oh sorry, with um, things like ensuring that children's knowledge around responsibility for violence is accurate. About half of them had goals related to, to advocacy, um, such as identifying children who might require expert intervention. And slightly fewer had goals relating to parenting skills training. Specific psychotherapy related goals were actually the least common across all the programs. And I'd note that overall this pattern is pretty much the opposite to what the international evidence shows is effective. But we did find that providers actually already know that access to intensive services such as psychotherapy is the biggest gap in current services. Um, you can also see here some of the other gaps that providers identified, um, including a lack of qualified staff and a lack of kaupapa Māori services. Uh, by contrast, an area where we seem to be doing well is in offering a mix of services for different audiences and in different formats. Most of the programmes we surveyed were not just for children exposed to family violence, but also other groups such as direct victims, uh, adult victims and whole whānau. And there was also a good mix of intervention formats. So um, many services could be tailored to either individual or group deliveries depending on the needs of the client and others were offered across the different <coughs> mix of formats. Uh, when it comes to provider perceptions of what makes the most difference for children exposed to family violence, we found a, quite a big range of responses, uh, but generally they clustered around children having their experiences validated, so things like being heard and learning to process their feelings, and the importance of stable relationships, so things like having a trusting relationship with the facilitator and having social experiences with other children. Um, an interesting omission was an evidence basis for the things that make a difference. So this was actually only mentioned by one provider, and it suggests that we can definitely be working here to increase the knowledge among providers about what the evidence in their field says is effective. Um, so speaking of evidence, we did ask providers whether they had evaluation evidence as well for the effectiveness of their programs. And half of them hadn't had their program evaluated, of those that had, only two were able to actually share the evaluation with us. And so this could reflect a lack of evaluation evidence in part, but also old, inaccessible or not well circulated evaluation. Um, and in all of those cases it indicates that the evaluation findings are not being well used to inform current practice. So in the absence of evaluation evidence, we asked providers what other sources of evidence they had about the effectiveness of their programs. And by far the most common source cited was feedback, and within that it usually came from clients or their parents. So to bring the international evidence and that from Aotearoa together, um, I wanted to start by summarising some areas where we're doing well. So we are offering specific services for children exposed to family violence. Two thirds of the survey respondents did offer a service for that group. Um, we know that from the international evidence that interventions have the greatest impact when they're delivered to children along with their family, whānau and community. And we are offering a good mix of services for those different groups. 
the international evidence also shows definitively that repairing the, the damaged relationships between children and their non-abusive parent is crucial to helping both of them heal. And indeed we did find a strong emphasis on good relationships between children and their non-abusive parents or caregivers, as well as with facilitators and other children in the groups or in similar situations. So I think the most important takeaway point from those findings is to continue supporting the services that offer integrated programs for children with those for their non-abusive parents, family, whānau and community. Um, there are also a number of areas where we have opportunities to improve our services so that we can better help children exposed to family violence. And crucially, we need to improve the availability and accessibility of psychotherapy and parenting skills interventions. So these are the types which have the greatest impact, they're not commonly provided in New Zealand, and providers agree that it's the single biggest gap in our current services. So the recent announcement of culturally responsive trauma-informed cognitive behavioural therapy mouthful <laughs> for children exposed to family violence is an excellent start to this, but I do think that we can go further. Um, it's probably worth redirecting some of the funding for advocacy and psychoeducation type interventions towards these types instead. The international evidence also shows us that it's important for those types of services to be delivered by highly qualified practitioners who understand the influence of trauma on how children think, feel, react, make choices and behave. Providers agreed that this was another big gap in current services, and although it would place additional demands on already stretched funding resources, the funding can actually become ineffective when the gap between children's needs and staff skills is too great for them to have a significant impact anyway. And we also need to improve providers' own understanding of what works for children exposed to family violence and about the different types of evidence that exist. So without the use of a range of evidence sources, including robust evaluation, we risk delivering services that actually hurt rather than help. Um, an example of this is constructing safety plans with children for what to do when family violence happens. So it looks like it should be helpful, but the evidence shows us that doing that without also addressing the other factors around the violence that's already happened leads to worse outcomes because it reinforces a message to children that they should expect this violence to continue. And finally, I just wanted to finish up with some areas where we need to know more. Um, most importantly, we need to generate more and better evidence about the effectiveness of New Zealand programs. And in particular, we're uniquely placed to be able to lead the field in developing evidence about whānau-based and kaupapa Māori approaches. We also need to continue gathering evidence about how overseas interventions work in New Zealand because they don't always translate perfectly and we need to take our context into account. So when we know what works, we can do what works, and that's what will help children the most. I muri, i taku kōrero, i tēnei ata. Kei te kōrero au, mō tētahi whakatauki. Nō reira, mā te whakātu, ka mōhio, mā te mōhio, ka marama, mā te marama, ka matau, mā te matau, ka ora. Nō reira, kia ora tātou. <laughs>